Everyone knows that DIYing your own speakers can save you a lot of money, and there's a ton of DIY kits out there. Unfortunately, not every DIY kit is designed the same. Some of them just give you raw drivers, other ones will give you maybe a flat pack and the drivers, and then there's a few, like this DIY kit by HiVi, that actually includes everything you need, from the finishing veneer all the way to the screws and the speaker wire. And so today, we're gonna take a look at the HiVi 3.1 kit and see just how good it actually is. And could you build this with the tools that you have? Let's find out. <laughs> Of course, this does come with the flat pack and that's gonna be where we're going to start with this. What I would recommend is doing a dry fit to make sure it fits together before you glue it up. Now, if you choose to build this, there's one thing that you absolutely must not forget. Don't eat or swallow this sticker. When laying this out, you always gotta figure out what the top and bottom is. If you put this the wrong way, the brace is gonna go right through the mid-range. That's not good. Flip it around. This brace should be lined up right between the woofer and the mid-range. Now I do recommend using some painter's tape or masking tape to hold everything together in place during glue up. Now you should go ahead and clamp this together. I did go ahead and take the extra step of nailing before clamping. Now this box is actually looking a lot like what those Instagram models actually look like when they wake up in the morning. That's right, it's looking pretty rough. So we'll just use a little bit of sandpaper, actually pretty rough grit sandpaper. Let's go 60 grit to help prep this thing for the next step. Now I decided in the beginning, I was not gonna be using the vinyl wrap that they gave me. It's nice that they provide it, but I want to definitely paint this. Because of that, I want it to look a little bit different. I don't want it to look like that square box shape that's here. So let's add a little bit more geometry to it. How about with, say, a chamfer? Of course, while I'm doing the chamfer, I get a tear out and that stinks because I'm gonna have to fix that with some Bondo. Of course, I need to use the Bondo anyway to fill the nail holes that I already had, so not a huge loss. Because of the way the miters go together, they don't always fit perfectly at a 45 degree angle, even though it might look like it on the outside. And this is where I would highly recommend anyone that's doing this kit, use something like liquid nails over wood glue because it would do a much better job filling those gaps, kind of like caulk. All right, it's time for the crossover and everything comes right inside this box.
One of the things I love about this kit is they make it really easy for anyone to be able to do. As you can see, all of the parts are marked out on the board and they have solder points everywhere on the back. So this should be really easy. So one of the things I found out that I really don't like about this is the crossover board does not have any numbers on it. So it doesn't say a resistor of one ohm, two ohm, whatever. Instead, it says like R3. And inside the booklet, don't throw it away, it gives you a breakdown on what those values are. It would be much easier if they didn't do that. Anyway, I can get back to soldering. Hi-Fi has come up with a really great way to secure the crossover board, which includes hammering these inserts into the bottom of the cabinet. Unfortunately, with the brace and everything there, this becomes pretty problematic after it's all glued together. It's just a very tight space. I would have much rather hammered these in ahead of time and covered them up with some painter's tape while I was finishing up the cabinet. And I think that's what you should do, even if the directions tell you otherwise. Now the directions don't say which way to put your crossover board in here. In general, you want your inductors typically as far away from the woofer magnet as possible. Unfortunately, there are really inductors on both sides, so it probably wouldn't make that big of a difference, but I'm gonna go ahead and put mine with these two inductors facing the rear of the cabinet. All right, now it's actually time to hook up the speaker wire. Let's take a look at this. They came with one long speaker wire. This is for the entire, both boards. So don't use it all on one. Now, you could solder these on. I've come to the realization that uh, that doesn't work always that great, especially if you want to make any changes, so I use these. finished building it let's talk about its performance first of all the price point for this is really pretty amazing actually the components themselves are pretty much the same price as the kit if you were to buy them all by themselves so that means you're getting the flat pack and all of the crossover components and speaker wire and everything of that nature for free and that's a really good deal and honestly really probably necessary because if we take a look at the measurements of these things you can see that the high end is very, very high up there compared to the rest of the graph. Now, the high end is about 10 decibels higher than the mid range, and that's quite substantial and really to the point where I don't really enjoy listening to these with the crossover that comes with it. Thankfully, there have been a lot of people that have designed new crossovers for this. And you can actually see some of the mods here and I'll make sure to link those down below if you wanna do that. Now, I also plan to do a new crossover mod for this because the parts are just too good not to have a great crossover. And I think these speakers would really come alive with a different crossover in there. So I do plan to create a new one. So if you wanna see that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Otherwise guys, 
This is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.